Hi everyone, welcome to new video from Not Real Engineering. And in this video, we are going to see how to run Abacus job on multiple processors using parallelization. In this video, I am going to show example using Abacus explicit, but you can use it with Abacus standard as well. Before we begin this video, let me tell you briefly what is parallelization. Usually, whenever you run any process on a computer, it will be run on a single processor by default. But parallelization is nothing but dividing a big job into multiple number of small tasks and then give those tasks to more number of processors and those processors will work simultaneously. So you will save time and at the end, the results from all those tasks will be combined and you will get your final output. These days, most of the computers have more than one processors. That's why it is possible. And Abacus has this functionality inbuilt. So while creating a job, you can tell Abacus on how many number of processors you want to run and Abacus will paralyze the job for you. And as you are dividing your main job, into number of smaller tasks and running them simultaneously, the total time to run the job will decrease. When you do parallelization, Abacus has to spend some time on dividing job into smaller tasks and again at the end combining everything together. So these two process will cost you extra time and you will save time over here. Therefore, if your job is smaller, then it doesn't make sense to do parallelization because you will not save much time over here, but you will add some time because of these two points. Therefore, advantage of parallelization only can be seen when you have a huge job. One example is if you have a job with large number of increments, if you have a job with large number of nodes or elements, you can definitely save a lot of time by doing parallelization. Finally, the beauty of this is results will not change. Although if you run it on one processor or if you run it on eight processors, the results will be seen. Therefore, whenever you have a big job, always use Abacus parallelization. There is one disadvantage though of Abacus parallelization. When you run job on more than one processors, you need more and more Abacus tokens. Abacus tokens is something related to Abacus licensing. And in short, this means you just have to buy more tokens from the cell systems. So you end up paying more. That seems fair because you are saving time. Now, before we solve example, we have to answer these two important questions. First, how to check how many processors your computer has. Because if your computer has only two processors and if you tell Abacus to run job on four processors, it's not going to make sense. You will not see the expected speed up. Therefore, it's very important first to know how many processors your computer has. And then secondly, you should know how many tokens you will need if you run it on more number of processors and how many tokens you have currently. To answer first question, if you have windows, you just have to go to task manager in that go to performance and over here in CPU. When you go there, you will see here number of cores. So my computer has 12 number of cores and there is something called logical processors, which my computer says 24. Usually you will see logical processors will be double the number of cores. The number of cores is actual physical number of processors you have and logical processors is how many number of processors your operating system sees. And this is done by hyper threading. So although you have 12 number of cores, your operating system is tricked into seeing them as 24. So definitely you can go up to this value, but some people say it is a marketing gimmick. And as you increase number of processor up to number of cores, you will see a good amount of speed up and later the speed up will decrease, but definitely it will help. And to answer second question, this is the table which shows if you are running job on these number of processors, how many tokens of Abacus you will need. So if you are running on a single processor, usually for one job, you need five tokens. Then if you run it on two processors, you will need six tokens, four processors, eight tokens. And similarly, you can see over here. Now, this is not a linear relationship. Actually, Abacus calculates number of tokens needed by this formula. So you can put how many number of cores you are using for a job and you will get number of tokens from this formula. I have no idea why they came up with this formula, but that's what it is. And to check how many tokens of Abacus you have, you just have to type this in a command line. Being said that, let's run example and see how to do parallelization. Now, this is the example I'm going to run today. This is a 3D part made from rubber and we are going to fix the bottom surface and apply a displacement boundary condition on top surface in a compressive direction. I have solved this example in a separate video. So if you want to see how to build up this example, you can see that video. Now I will just open this example and tell you how to do parallelization. And we will run same example first with one processor, then with two and up to eight processors. And I will enter how much time it takes to run on multiple processors. And we will see if time is decreasing or not. Let's start with Abacus CA. First set up your working directory. I'm going to open this example from my last video. So this is a rubber part. 
and I have meshed it with very fine mesh. Therefore, it has huge number of elements and nodes. To create parallel job, first go to jobs, then create job. First create job to run on two processors. So I will name it two underscore core. Say continue. Now over here, you have to go into parallelization and take this use multiple processors. Now by default over here, it is two. If you want more number of processors, you can increase this to five or six. You can go up to any number. And when you change number over here, Abacus is changing number of domains as well. So usually keep this same. Let's start with two. I will keep domain also two and say OK. Now this job will run on two processors. Similarly, if you want to create job for eight processors, let's say eight underscore core. Then again, go to parallelization, use multiple processors and move this up to eight. Say OK. Now, when you submit this job, it will run on eight processors. When you submit this job, it will run on two processors. So let's submit them. And finally, we will see how much time each job took. A few moments later. Okay, here I got the results for two core and eight core. Let's open them. Now, just to make sure results are same. Here we have my stress, which is 2.2. Let's open the another job as well, which we ran on two cores and see what is the MISA stress over here. Again, 2.2. So results are same irrespective of how many number of cores we ran on. Okay, so I ran same job with five different number of processors. So let's open this status file where we can see how much time it took. If you go into status file and if you scroll down at the end, you will see how much time it took to complete the job. So you have to check this CPU time. It took two hours, 21 minutes. I will put all of these in the PowerPoint table. And these are the results to run the job with single processor. It took two hours and 21 minutes and with two processors, it took one hour, 11 minutes. So you can see it's almost half and time goes on reducing as we increase the number of processors. Now in computer architecture, there is a great way to measure the performance of parallelization and that it's measured by speed up. Speed up is nothing but time taken to run that job on single processor divided by time taken to run the same job with multiple processors. So if we calculate speed up for all of these jobs, you can see the speed up values are given over here. So as number of processor is increasing, speed up is increasing. In ideal case, this speed up should be equal to number of processors. But in reality, it will be always less than number of cores because we always have to do some extra work while doing parallelization. And because of that ideal speed up is never achieved. And as you increase number of processors, the communication between each processors also will take longer time. And that's why speed up will decrease even further. So you can see ideally this should be a straight line like this. But in reality, you will always get some line which will deviate as you increase number of processors. But still, this is a great value. You can see the job which used to take two hours, 21 minutes. We are solving it in only 23 minutes. If you like the content, please check out similar videos on this channel. I upload new video on every Monday. All the codes which I use on this channel are also uploaded on channel's GitHub profile. You can directly download them from here and the link of GitHub profile is included in the description box below. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.